We've been a leader in banking for more than 100 years. You'll find us here, at home, on your phone, and everywhere you go. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Sponsored by Renaissance Bank. Good morning, Northeast Mississippi. This is News Break for Wednesday, February 22nd. I'm Brad Locke. Thanks for joining us. You can catch News Break each Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Watch it at djournal.com, Facebook, YouTube, or the Daily Journal's mobile apps for Apple and Android devices. Going to take a quick look now at news, sports, and weather in Northeast Mississippi. Let's start with the weather underground forecast for today. We're going to have partly cloudy skies, a high of 75 degrees, low of 52, and a 20% chance of rain. The three-day outlook Thursday is going to be partly cloudy again with a high of 76, low of 56, just a 10% chance of rain. Friday, partly cloudy skies, high of 78, low of 45, 20% chance of rain. Then cooling off on Saturday, clear skies, high of 57, low of 32, a 0% chance of rain. Let's take a look now at some of the top stories in the Daily Journal and djournal.com on this Wednesday. Well, Governor Phil Bryant announced another round of budget cuts on Tuesday. This time it affects education funding. The $43 million in cuts marks the fifth time in less than 14 months that Bryant has made budget reductions, and it's the third time this fiscal year he's made cuts. The second term Republicans said education, including the Mississippi Adequate Education Program, would be cut about one half of a percent, or around $10 million. Now, exempted from this round of cuts are student financial aid, child protective services, the emergency management agency and the Department of Mental Health. Now some of these entities, including mental health, have been cut by the governor in the past. The cuts were necessitated by continuing sluggish tax revenue collections. The state is not collecting enough revenue to fund the current fiscal year budget that was passed by the 2016 legislature. Bryant said simply leaving things alone and hoping collections would improve was not a good option. He said postponing reductions until later would force state agencies to make relatively larger cuts later on. Also Tuesday, Bryant transferred $7 million from, from the Working Cash Stabilization Fund to avoid further cuts. Some Belmont High School students are looking for people who want to live a healthier lifestyle to participate in an upcoming project. The school's Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America chapter is doing a community-wide project designed to educate the Belmont community about health and wellness. It will take place in March. The FCCLA does a community service project every year, but group sponsor Holly Nichols said they wanted to branch out this year. Nichols said her students researched other schools that have done similar projects focused on health, wellness, and community education. The project kicks off March 1st through the 4th with registration days at Belmont High. Anyone in 7th grade or older can participate, and those who do will receive a pedometer, t-shirt, and access to activities all month long. Now, there is an activity planned for almost every day in March, ranging from meal planning to yoga and Zumba classes to a 5K, and for each activity a person attends, they'll earn points. The registration, which is $15, will also act as a weigh-in so participants can track their progress. The Lee County Acro Center is getting $12,000 worth of repairs and upgrades. The Lee County Board of Supervisors, which is committed to more direct management of the facility, approved the spending on Tuesday. The money will pay for rekeying locks and for the sheet metal needed to repair a damaged wall at the Agri Center's main arena. It's been nearly a month since the supervisors eliminated the Agri Center's three full-time staff members, including Director Tori Mitchell. Now, the board cited the facility's persistent failure to generate sufficient revenue to cover its own expenses. However, Lee County leaders have since decided to rehire one of the three Agri Center employees, Cody Franks, at an hourly pay rate of $12.49. Franks is now employed by the Road Department, but will remain involved in Agri Center operations. The Road Department has taken on the role of ensuring the center is open for booked events, and that responsibility will largely fall on Franks. Lee County Road Manager Tim Allred personally made an accounting for infrastructure needs and after inspecting the Agri Center buildings, he presented a report to supervisors on Tuesday. And in sports, the new Ole Miss linebackers coach is confident his unit will improve in 2017. Bradley Dale Pavetto gets his first look at the group he inherits, plus two mid-year enrollees when the Rebels start spring drills the first week of March. 
He has a challenge in front of him. Ole Miss ranked 100th or lower in the nation in total defense, scoring defense, and rushing defense last season. And a lot of that had to do with poor play by the linebackers. There are seven different starting combinations among the Rebels' two linebacker positions in their 4-2-5 base defense last fall. Pavetto, who's in his 30th year of coaching, said fixing last year's problems won't be only about putting the right players in the right places. He said it's important to capture the hearts and minds of the players. The group could also benefit from some fresh blood this year. Junior college transfer Brendan Williams and high school signee Breon Dixon, a four-star prospect, will go through spring drills, and so will redshirt freshman Donta Evans. The linebackers and defense as a whole will also look different in their formations. New defensive coordinator Wesley McGriff will use a 4-3 base defense. That's it for news break on this Wednesday. We do want to remind you to check out a couple of the podcasts we produce here at the Daily Journal. The Memo, All Things Northeast Mississippi, News and Entertainment, with myself and W. Derek Russell every Wednesday and Friday. You can find the episodes for free in iTunes, your podcast apps, or at memo.djournal.com. And also, Prep Rally, a high school sports podcast with myself, Blake Morgan, and Gene Phelps. New episodes every Wednesday. Find them in iTunes, your podcast apps, or at preprally.djournal.com. All the stories I've talked about today you can find in the Daily Journal or at djournal.com. We're on Twitter, at djournalnow. Also find us on Facebook. And that's it for Newsbreak on this Wednesday. I'm Brad Locke. We'll see you next time.